Hi Legacy Youth Group. My name is Grace. I am an eight, I'm 18 years old. Um, I just started my freshman year um, at Williamson College. I'm studying worship studies. Um, I moved to Franklin about a year ago from Dallas, Texas. I lived in Texas all my life. I was born there and um, I have a pretty large family. There's seven kids in total um, and my dad's been a minister all of my life. So, um, we were always moving around and we'd really only stay, um, in a church about three years and then we'd move again. So as you can imagine, it was really hard for us kids to make really good friends only being in place for very long. And so our family was really, um, we got really close because we were our only, you know, good friends and we were homeschooled, have been all my life. And, um. God, God's been really good growing up, and I always thought my testimony, like, meant nothing because it wasn't this crazy, I turned from a crazy lifestyle, and now I'm, you know, love God. I can never remember not loving God, and I think that's a great testimony. I think that's amazing that God did that. Um, so, let's see, um, when I was a sophomore in high school, um, I, probably around May of my 16-year-old year, um, I started having these really weird headaches in the side of my, my right side, and, uh, we didn't know what they were, and we just kind of moved on, and, um, on, uh, in June, uh, my family was traveling, we do a lot of, like, competition stuff, we were traveling, we were in Kentucky, and we had had this long week of competing, and we were all exhausted, it had been really stressful, well, um, June 11th, we were eating in a college cafeteria, and there were probably about 100 people there. We all, everyone knew us very well, and um, I had been feeling really bad that morning, so it was lunchtime, and I had finished my meal, and I was taking my trays and plates to the place where you deposit them for the kitchen, and I, like, all of a sudden felt really weird, and I made it back to my chair, and my vision kind of went, and I couldn't hear very well at all. It was kind of like everything was a background noise. And um, I heard, I vaguely heard someone go like, Grace! And then all these people were around me. There were about six men who picked me up and laid me on the floor. And um, for about 11 minutes, I wasn't breathing. They even got out of the defibrillator because they thought I was gonna, my heart was going to stop. And it was just a very traumatic event. Um, after 11 minutes, the paramedics came and got me, and, um, we went sirens blare into the hospital, and that's where they did, but lots and lots of tests on me, and, um, then I was, tra that night I was transferred to a pediatric ICU in West Virginia, which was only about 15 minutes away, and, um, in the morning, our doc, my doctor came in and told my parents and I that they'd saw, they'd seen something on my cat skin. And, um, it looked like a brain tumor. So about, there was about a day where we lived with thinking about that. And that, uh, the next morning they did a really long MRI. It was about two hours. And, um, about two hours after I came out, the doctor came in and told me that it wasn't a brain tumor. So, um, after that, they didn't know what was wrong and um they really wanted me to get back to dallas and so the doctor gave me some medicine that hopefully would keep these episodes from happening um on our trip back and the next day my parents and i flew home um once i got back that's when the test really started and for about three months i had over 37 of these episodes and no one could figure out what they were and then in the early september like exactly three months later, I was diagnosed with epilepsy, which is a neurological disorder. It's in the brain and it causes your um, body to have seizures. And so um, over the next long time, they kept trying to give me different medicines to keep them from happening. And it's been two years and I still have them pretty often. Right now I'm actually four months seizure free, which is crazy. I've never gone that long. And um, I've been feeling better than I've ever felt before. Um, so God is good and he's gracious. Since my family and I moved here to Franklin, God has really been stirring in my heart about uh, praying for our generation and how to intercede for them. Um, it all started with me reading Exodus and the Lord brought me to Exodus 33 
And that's when Moses has just received the Ten Commandments from the, from the Lord, and he comes down from the mountain to give them to the people of Israel. But they have given all of their golden jewelry and earrings and all of that to Aaron and told him to make a golden calf um, so that they can worship the calf. And this is, guys, you got to remember, this is right after they came out of Egypt and God performed all these miracles and signs. And yet so quickly they've turned from that into a life of debauchery and sin. Um, so Moses comes down, he gets so angry, he throws the two stones that had the Ten Commandments on them. And after a lot of violence and crazy stuff, you'll have to go read it. Um, he goes back up on the mountain to talk to the Lord and the Lord gives him another set of the Ten Commandments and the Lord tells Moses, that's it. I've got to wipe these people out. I cannot stand their sin anymore. And then Moses goes into an intercession where he's like, Lord, you have brought them through so much. You've led them out of Egypt. You've called them your people. And now you can't turn back on them. You have to stay and deliver your people. And the Lord says, because you have prayed that I will... I will not do it. And it actually says the Lord relented because of Moses' prayer. And then the Lord commands Moses. Moses makes a tent um, while they're traveling, uh, basically a moving temple. Um, and whenever Moses goes in there, um, the pillar of the Lord, a cloud of the Lord, his glory will come down upon that tent. And Moses says that the Lord interacts with him face to face like a friend. And um, this tent also is used for the people to go in there and be in the presence of the Lord. And um, then the Lord tells Moses, and this is really where the Lord brought me to. The Lord tells Moses, um, okay, you've got to keep going. You and the people, it's time for y'all to go to the promised land, the land that I've given to you. And um, Moses says, oh Lord, I will not go unless your presence goes with me. And the Lord says, okay, I will do what you've asked. I will, I will answer my promises and I'll go with you. And then Moses cries out, Yahweh, I want to see your glory. I want to see your face. And um, the Lord answers him, no man can see my face. It's too holy. And you sinful people, you can't stand before my face and live. And then the Lord says, but, but because you have asked this, I will, I will um, hide you in the cleft of my rock and I will cover my hand over your eyes and I will pass by you. And after I've passed by you, I will take my hand off and you will be able to see my back. Though you can't see my face, you'll be able to see a portion of me. And um, this really starts stirring in my heart last fall and realizing that someone needs to stand up and start praying that for our generation. Lord, we want to see your face. We want to see your glory. Even the people that don't know you, Lord, allow them to see your glory. And um, knowing people that I know that are living in such darkness and lies and start praying over them. Lord, would you invade their hearts? Would your presence invade their lives to where they can't resist you? And I think it's so, so important for people in our generation to stand up and say, no, we are not going to take any more of this. We're not going to take watching our friends, watching people in our generation go into such lives of darkness. We're not going to do it. And it's time for leaders to arise and to stand up and say, nah, no more. We will not watch this. Anyway, that's something the Lord's been stirring in my heart, and I thought I would share it with you guys. And start asking the Lord even to stir your heart, to get a burden on your heart to start praying for our generation. So um, thank you so much for letting me share this with you guys, and I hope that it impacts y'all and that the Lord starts working in y'all. So I'm so excited about what the Lord's doing in the gate. So thank you.